All right, so I just want to talk about tying into your tax and also tying into your stops and starts. So as I roll this route, what you want to look for is you want to look for an even amount of penetration going through. Okay, so when I started all the way to where I stopped, we have an even amount of penetration all the way to the center where you see that beam of light right there. That's where I tied into my tack. So we feathered that opposite side, we followed it through to the other side where we keyhole, and essentially, just like I said earlier, you want your tacks to become a part of your route. So that is what it should look like when you penetrate fully through and have a flush convex root. So obviously where I tied back in right here, you see this kind of bulbous little root part. Um, you know, essentially the goal is as you become a better welder, um, you only want to use your grinder when you absolutely need to in mistakes or in poor fit up or damaged material or repair work. Um, so in this case scenario, I want to be able to have a nice penetrated root right, that lays flush. Um, at the absolute most, you want it to be flush with the base metal, but you really do want it to be um, inset so that when you put your hot pass in with a 7018, it has plenty of room to then come up to flush and be prepared to cap. So, um, in the case that it's very bulbous and you had to step a lot and you were weaving in and out trying to close that gap up because it was keyholing big, um, you can take a grinder and what you do is, all you do is just come straight in place the grinder straight in. You don't want to bear down, you don't want to bear up because that's going to affect your bevel angle um, and throw that all off. So all you want to do is just come straight in and you want to grind that well down. Not too much because you don't want to blow your root out. But you just want to grind the high spots out of that root so that way when you go to put your hot pass in, it will set in there nice and flush. So the next thing we're going to talk about now that our root is in, um, we've tied into all of our tacks and our keyholes, uh, we're going to talk about the hot pass. Uh, whether you do this with a 332nd or a 1 8 rod is entirely up to you. Uh, the main thing that you're looking for after you put that hot pass in, um, essentially you want to cover up your root, <clears throat> but the real purpose of it is to tie that root in um, to the base metal. So you want it to sit flush with the bevel. So if you run too fast, a lot of people what they do is if, if their heat is too cold or they're running too fast, what will happen is the weld will roll and you'll trap slag on the top and the bottom. Um, if you weld it too hot, it'll droop and roll over. So you kind of want to find that perfect heat range depending on whether you're using 332nd or 1 8 rod. Um, and again, you want the weld to sit flush uh, with the edges of the bevel. So in layman's terms, when you're finished with your weld, you want the edge of the bottom part sitting close to the edge of the bevel and you want the edge of the top weld sitting with the top edge of the bevel. So your toes want to essentially come to the edges of the bevel. But you definitely want to leave both edges vis visible so that way you can uh, <clears throat> have a starting or a reference point for your cap. So. about half of my hot pass in. Um, no preference on how you run this. I know that I mentioned on the route, um, when you actually run the route, you want to quarter it to disperse the heat. Um, so when we ran the route, you know, we run one section here from six to three, then we come over and maybe run 12 to nine, then six to nine and 12 to three again. Um, so <clears throat> we put our hot pass in with a one eighth rod. Um, you don't have to do as much movement with a one eighth, you just kind of sit in there and cook it and it just rides. Uh, whereas with a 332nd, um, 
Preferably you're, you're doing kind of a horseshoe motion and all that's doing is that spreading that puddle out. With a 1 8 it's depositing enough metal at 115 amps where you can just kind of ride. Um, so again, it, it doesn't have to look perfect, but the goal of your hot pass is you want to be able to remove the slag without having to get out a grinder or without having to beat you know the, the snot out of it with a uh, chipping hammer. So if you'll notice, I have an even amount of weld on the bottom and on the top. And really that just comes with practice, paying attention to your puddle, watching the edges of the bevel. Um, we've got my tie in here. Um, I didn't come down to, or low enough, or sorry, high enough. I've got a little spot right there. But again, like I said, the goal of this isn't to put in perfection. The goal of this is to understand what you're doing. And the goal of that hot pass, you don't want to trap slack. So as long as you have an even profile, when I come down and I look on the side of the weld, that it's not drooping down very low, or it's not uh, hanging up very high, it's got an even profile, and all that is is heat, rod angle, and, and your travel speed. So, <clears throat> again, the goal of your hot pass, you want to consume your root, and you want to be flush with the edges of each side of the bevel, the top and the bottom. And with experience, you'll be able to watch that puddle and really read it and pay attention to how it's um, hardening as you're welding. So we put our hot pass in. We did half of it with, with 1 8 and the other half with 3 30 seconds. Um, and I'm going to show you how to cap with both of those, but they are um, almost identical in the sense that on your first cap pass, your goal is to eliminate the bottom edge. Um, so you always go bottom, middle, top. You never go top, bottom, middle. Now obviously when you get out in the field and some other people will tell you different, you just do what you have to do. But for the sake of a six inch schedule, schedule 40 instructional video, you wanna go from the bottom to the top, build it up like a house. Okay, so one thing I want to talk about is um, some machine settings. So whether you're a Miller guy or a Lincoln guy or an HTP guy or ESOB, whatever it is that you like to run, you want to pay attention to what it's doing when you're welding. Um, if you put in a root, you know, and the arc keeps cutting out, you know, it's probably not the machine, check your ground. But certain machines will run hotter and certain machines will run colder. So uh, back at Georgia Trade School, for instance, on a Miller, I'll run a root at 95 would be perfect. If I run 95 on a Lincoln, it'll blow it out. So, and I'm not saying that all the time Lincoln runs hotter, but for instance, this uh, HTB, HTP, excuse me, Invertig 221, I butchered that bad. Chuggy will fix it for me. But um, I had to run the route a lot colder than what I'm used to. So even with a 186010, I noticed I had to turn it down. I honestly felt comfortable at around 68, 69 amps, really at the max 70. Whereas back home, I'd probably run around 80 to 85. So most people might say, oh, 10 or 15 amps, that's not gonna make a difference. Well, in this, in this scenario, it did, it made a huge difference. Another thing I wanna talk about on the cap, um, 
you know, 6010 rods, they deposit a slag that um, it's very difficult to get out, but you can sometimes run over, just kind of get it out real easy with a wire wheel. But 7018 slag or 11018 slag, um, it can get trapped very easily. So as we're welding this cap, you know, I noticed on the first one, the, the, the flux came off real good. Then on the second and the third one, you'll see in the video, it kind of just rolled off. That's all machine settings. Every time you have your heat correct, your travel speed, your rod angle, uh, that flux is gonna come off. So, in other words, to bring this to a conclusion, as you're running your route or your hot pass or your cap, pay attention to your machine, pay attention to what it's doing. If it's not welding right and you feel like you're propped up and you've done the correct amount of prep and time, um, then you wanna stop, you wanna take a second and say, maybe I need to look at my machine. How's my ground? What are the settings? So, that's that as far as machine goes. As far as this cap goes, you will see that I went a little wide on this one, wider than I generally like to do, but this is just to show you all three of the welds. So typically you wanna keep it very tight, um, and instead of the rule that I usually do, which is half the weld outside, half the weld inside on the bottom and the top cap welds, um, I more or less went 75 outside, 25% inside, so you could see that middle weld. Um, so as you come down the profile of this weld, the camera can't see this right now, but as you come down the profile, you know, you want to be under an eighth of an inch. You don't want to have a big bulge or a bunch of, uh, you know, protrusions or slag and all that. You want to be nice and tight, close to the pipe, um, with, within an eighth of an inch. So we're going to go ahead and cap this other side with 330 seconds so you can see the difference of the profiles of the, of the welds. Um, but that's pretty much it for eighth rod from root to hot to cap all the way out.